Welcome. In this video, we're going to show you how to create an HDR image using a single exposure from a raw image. So uh, make sure you have your camera set in raw mode and that when you open the picture, it opens up in Adobe Camera Raw. Uh, let's take a look at what we have here. And basically, we've got uh, my original image and I want to show you where we're going to go with this. When I turn this off, this is where we're going to end up. And we're going to have to uh, chug through a lot of different settings to get here. And let's kind of break it down a little bit. First, we are going to create a ridiculously bright um, image using different camera raw settings. And we're going to uh, bring back our darks using a black and white version. And we're going to fix a couple things, like uh, we lose a little bit of our over the topness uh, here and then we uh, notice some problems with some of the blur areas where there's some lines forming around um, this lady's arms and we're gonna go ahead and fix those with an original image just to make that come out so let's get started on our picture alright so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to open up your raw image and I'm going to go ahead and open up my raw image and here we go we've got this um, picture coming up in camera raw and I am working in uh, CS55 so I have the latest camera raw for that version which was 6.7 the first thing I'm going to do is take down my temperature a little bit to around 4500 and uh, maybe take my tint down a little bit. I tend to work my way down, uh, down the different numbers here. Sometimes I press auto, but when I'm trying to make um, this picture, I, I'm not going to do that. So, um, if you make changes with a with a file, I want you to understand what happens here. If I make changes and I open the image, it's just going to open up a regular stock image. Um, it's not a raw image anymore and with CS5 I can't go back into the raw situation so rather than doing it that way I want to show you how to get a picture open that has uh, the ability to go back into raw multiple times so we're gonna go ahead and do this again we're gonna do file open and uh, you see how it's created this little XMP file and sometimes these aren't visible. Sometimes the settings on a computer make them to where they're not visible. I'm going to trash mine by just click, right clicking on it and choosing delete. So now um, the XMP file stores those changes that you create in the camera raw. When I double click this this time, you notice my 4500 is back to 4900. Now rather than opening up the image straight up, I'm going to hold down shift and it's going to change to where it says open object and now I will get a document that has a smart object and this is um, cool because you can go straight back into camera raw by just double clicking this and you'll be editing those settings inside camera raw again I'm gonna hit cancel now this one here I'm gonna go ahead and rename this um, original okay and the original one here we're gonna we're gonna have that um, be used again for our over-the-top colored one and if I use this I'm going to want to instead of dragging it into the new layer I'm going to have to right click on it because I want to create a new smart object via copy which means if I modify the raw contents in this one, in this layer, it won't change the original. If I just drag it down and I change one, both of them would have changed. So, now that I have this new one, we're going to call this one color. All right, and I'm going to double click inside that thumbnail and I'll go back into camera raw. Now I can go ahead and make those changes. I can go in here and change the temperature to 4500 and I've been able to write some of these down so I know exactly where I'm going but um, as you're doing this you're just trying to basically make an over-the-top image we're going to 
Uh, let's see. Let's go to our recovery here, and we're going to put this up really high. Our fill light really high. And you can see we're already starting to get some craziness in the colors. Uh, I'm going to put my blacks up really high because I've lost them all now. So now I'm, I'm definitely getting this ridiculously vivid color. I'm going to turn up my brightness to its maximum, 150. And I'm going to put my contrast down to zero. And let's see here. Under clarity, which is going to create a lot of noise, okay, and you really can't see that unless I zoom in, but let's take a look at it here. We'll zoom in on an area here. Okay, so when you turn up the clarity, you're going to see that you'll, you'll get a lot of noise coming through. And that noise we'll have to um, keep an eye on. Let's see here. I grabbed the wrong one here. Let's take clarity up. So you can see you're definitely getting a lot more little dots and specks coming through. I'm going to take my vibrance down a little bit. Um, let's see here, about negative 12. And do the same thing on saturation, which is a lot faster and works a lot more powerful. Works slightly differently on uh, the greens. And we'll zoom out and kind of show you where we're at. So we've got a pretty vivid image here. And let's go ahead and take the overall exposure down a little bit. That's back up here at the top. We'll take that back down a little bit about negative 0.15, not much. Now one of the things that I've noticed here is I'm getting this right here, this line on the arm here. That's because the blurriness um, is turning into a double line. And I'm also losing a lot of details in his eyes. And as with any child, he's got schmutz on his face. So we're going to have to fix that. So we're going to go over to the spot heel here, and I'm just going to select a little circle here, put it around that, and move it over here to allow that little area to fix. The neat thing about being working in Camera Raw is that all of these uh, little changes I do here are completely live, and I can go back and mess with them again later. Let's uh, jump back over to the zoom tools, which will bring back up my regular settings. And we're just going to change some of the settings in our tone curve. And what I want to do here in our tone curve is I'm going to make the lights uh, a little less uh, prominent. We're going to take that down to um, about negative 20. And darks down to about negative 20. Let's see here, we'll just write it in there. And let's see, let's put the shadows down a bit further. Let's put it down negative 30. Let's see how that looks. Okay, and uh, the next thing we want to take a look at is some of the, the noise that's been created now. So um, one of the things we want to do is, is definitely sharpen up our details, and that's going to increase our noise even further. I'm going to pull up my... Uh, sharpening panel here, my detail, and we're going to bring up my sharp sharpening options. Um, so you see now we're definitely getting a lot more noise. You can see see all that noise that's coming up, but it's going to create much more clarity in our image. So we're going to be um, pausing here around 80 something, and uh, let's see under the radius we're going to increase that as well, and the detail I'm going to put that up in the 60s. Now, if you um, alt-click this mask, you can see where it's how some of it's going to mask away, right? So you can see how some of the details are going away in these black areas, which is going to basically negate some of the noise that's generated. So if you alt-click this mask, and you'll see this color change to black and white, and you'll see the mask of it. And let's go ahead and start fixing our noise. Um, problem that we've created by adding our uh, detail here. So let's take our noise reduction dial up to about, uh, let's say, 40. Uh, luminance to 50. Let's see, 25, let's see. Yeah, okay, so and overall, this does make a pretty good difference here. Now, um, very clear in certain areas, nice and smooth in other areas. So now let's... Um, 
see what we can do to fix the darkness in these eyes. Well, this is where we're going to jump over to our adjustment brush. And the adjustment brush, uh, it allows us to make changes to um, our settings in an independent area. So what we can do is go ahead and place a pin here in his eye. And right now, my settings are um, uh, 60, 29, and uh, that's basically what I've set set this up as before, so it's still the same settings I want now. I just want to brighten up some things. And when I go down here, um, I can tell it to go auto mask, which is going to um, basically limit to, to my paintbrush to just this area. Now, I have a very tiny brush, and the brush is, is great for this situation, being only two, but I need to go ahead and zoom in to see if I can get even closer to my eyes and we'll use the space bar to come back over and what I want to do here is just kind of paint in to brighten up the eyes here now I don't want to go so far as to brighten up his skin and if, so you like go over and now I'm getting part of his skin coming out um, you also might notice if you click the show mask item in the bottom of the thing you can see that there are some specs coming through. You can turn off auto mask for a moment to help fix something like that and you can say okay I'm going to work just in this area. But if your mask starts to go out too far you'll see that it's affecting things you don't want like the um, thickness of his eyelid here. So be prepared to go back in a race to kind of fix some of those things and make them go away. I'm going to feather this down a little bit so it's a little bit crisper brush. I'm going to try and see if I can walk just along the edge here of the eye so I can get those parts fixed and a little bit up here. And we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with the other eye. And you don't need to make a new pen. You can just uh, go back to add mode. And when you go and paint in there, it's going to bring out that scene as well within his little pupils there. And that's basically what we want to do is to brighten up that area. And if you once again, if you go too far, click the erase and just erase that mask back. You can go back and see what your mask looked like. It's not too bad. All right. And I'm going to make this fade a little bit over here. So I'm going to increase my feather again. And this will allow me to just kind of fade that in, make it a little more natural looking. All right and a little bit over there okay and we'll go back in and zoom uh, back out again so what that did was that definitely made a difference uh, we can turn off preview and see that's how that's bringing those eyes back in because we don't want to lose his eyes um, they're pretty eyes alright so now that we've got this set up we're gonna go ahead and click OK and you'll see that we are well on our way to creating our HDR image now like I said in the beginning, we lose our uh, shadows in this situation. So let's see if we can take this layer and we'll duplicate it in a way that we create a new smart object. And we'll go ahead and bring back some of those shadows using a black and white version. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to say, uh, let's see, new smart object via copy. And this one here, I'm going to call it BW for black and white and we'll go inside and edit this now this one is going to be very similar um, settings okay very similar settings we're gonna just change some of these things like um, let's see first let's go ahead and make this thing black and white so we're gonna jump over to HSL grayscale and we're gonna choose convert to grayscale now that's creating something that's a little too um, bright for us and um, definitely it does it does okay job sometimes but in this case it's not so we're gonna click default and I wanna bring up some of these values let's see here um, I'm gonna make the reds a little a little brighter right and I'm gonna take the oranges down and these will definitely change for you depending on your situation I'm gonna take yellows down a little bit greens down a little bit let's see um, blues I'm gonna go ahead and increase those this is gonna change your shirt you see that it's also gonna adjust the sky up in the corner so I'm gonna make them a little there we go alright 
Okay, so now I've got a black and white version. Let's go back to my main page and adjust some of these settings. So overall, we need to make this thing um, change a lot. So we're going to take our recovery down almost to the bottom. And we're going to take our fill light down. This is going to darken things back up, bring us our shadows back. Let's see, 40 something. And we'll do the same thing with blacks. We'll just not have them so over the top. Let's bring them down. All right, and let's take our brightness and take that down. All right, so we're down in the 80s here. And the clarity, we'll go ahead and leave at 100. So this has already um, improved quite a bit, uh, our picture. And what we want to do is see if we can maybe check on the settings of that um, adjustment brush. So we're going to take our adjustment brush settings and we're just going to see if we click on it, it's going to reactivate that one. And we're going to just see if we can expose that up a little bit. So there we go. Bring his eyes back out. Okay. So don't forget to leave the eyes coming. And we'll go ahead and click OK. All right. All right, there we go. So at this point, we're going to pause and we're going to finish this video in another section. So stay tuned and we'll get into the latter half in the next video.